Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, riff at the start of the video because that's going to be the subject of today's lesson, how to write a killer riff. Well, to be honest with you, this is less of a riff and more of a kind of arpeggio sequence that moves through uh, a couple of different keys, but what of it? Uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I created it. Uh, so that hopefully you can use those, these kind of ideas that I'm going to show you and create your own ideas. Um, so I'm go going to show you exactly what I did. This morning I was listening to an absolutely beautiful piece of music by Chopin and it's the uh, Nocturne number no. 1 opus 9. And uh, at the start of the piece there's a, a, um, a figure that's played with a left hand. Um, and that is the figure upon which I've based this particular riff. Uh, so let's take a listen to it. Okay, it really stood out to me, that uh, left hand part. Um, it's basically played like this. Okay, so B flat minor. Uh, the intervals are root, fifth, flat three, root, five, five, in that order. One, five, flat three, one, five, five, okay? So I really like the space that that creates. Um, obviously the piece is beautiful and the melody is beautiful, but I thought I'd use this as an example. Um, but what we're not going to do is we're not going to lift exactly that, we're going to change it round. Uh, plagiarism is not good. Let's face it, nobody likes a thieving little knobhead. <laughs> so don't be a thieving little knobhead. Uh, be creative with the ideas that you come out with. So we're going to take that uh, rough idea and uh, sort of change it around a little bit. So what I did was move it up a fret to B minor. So that's where we're gonna start. Uh, that's where this riff starts. And I based it on this chord. Basically a B minor add nine, lovely sounding chord. Okay, and the pattern that I play is this. Okay, so you can hear the initial part is similar. The intervals aren't the same. Rhythmically it's the same because it's a series of eighth notes. Okay, so we get one, five, flat three, nine, five, one. So the order in which the intervals appear are different, okay? So then we get this, major seventh, ninth. Okay, so and then we get five, four, three, one. Okay, good. So the only note really we're missing there is the sixth degree. So this could be based upon harmonic or melodic minor. We don't know because the sixth isn't there. So anyway, I'm digressing a little bit. So now we've got our figure with the arpeggio. Very tasty. So what I did then was literally, once I'd got that pattern, I applied the same pattern to a series of diatonic chords. So six, five, four. So the five is major, the four is major. Um, so let me show you what those patterns are. Same kind of, you know, same uh, idea. And it's all diatonic, okay? Okay, 
That's chord number five. Then chord number four is this. So again, we're keeping it diatonic here. So we get that sharp four against the root. Oops. Okay, here, we're gonna to go to the five of B minor. So if we kept it diatonic, we would, this would just be um, an F sharp minor chord based on chord number three of that key. Uh, thinking in terms of the, uh, the, the major key, which is D. So, <coughs> Um, but I'm going to turn it into a five chord of B, which enables us to, uh, to move back to the B, see? So instead of the minor chord, turn it into a dominant chord. And we get this pattern. One. Okay, that's basically um, some diminished seventh shapes thrown in there to kind of give it a seven flat nine sound f sharp seven flat nine okay but instead of going back to the b we're going to modulate here so it's an ideal opportunity instead of playing the same thing to just change key to add a little bit of color to it so we're going to kind of step up a level and modulate to the subdominant so what is the subdominant of b it's e minor so that's where we're going to um, modulate two. So we're going to play exactly the same pattern that we played in B minor, but here. Okay, so the same pattern, same chords. Obviously this is twice. Okay, but if I play this same chord as we played here, but in the key of E minor, I'll be playing a B, but I want to go back to B. Uh, so I don't want that B7. So a really, really useful way of doing it is playing the, the five chord of B minor. So what is the five chord of B minor? It's F sharp seven, okay? So we had, okay, we get this note, but then we change to this, which sounds great. I love that sound. Oh, that's not right, is it? <laughs> Okay, so we're thinking F sharp dominant here. And then we're gonna play this line. Oh, sorry. And that takes us beautifully back to the key of B minor. So just from here. with the same pattern thrice. <laughs> okay, that's the entire riff or the entire pattern. As I say, it's more of an arpeggio pattern. Uh, but hopefully that's given you some ideas of kind of like the way that you can use a basic, whether it's a rhythmic or melodic motif or pattern and kind of morph it into your own thing. So that's what I did with uh, the opening of uh, Chopin's Nocturne Number no. 1. Um, and uh, this is what I ended up with. Sounds absolutely nothing like it, uh, but I got the inspiration from it. So that's what you can do. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. If you want to support what I do, you can head to my website. I'll leave links in the description box below where you can purchase HD lessons from me. Um, so do check that out. Hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch up with you guys in the next video.